and welcome to the um, September board meeting. Um, welcome back to school, teachers, administration, and staff. Um, I am going to call the meeting of the Hamilton Central School District Board of Education to order. Time is 6 o'clock. <clears throat> Okay. Um, a Board of Education meeting is a meeting held in public, not a public mm -hmm. meeting. Anyone wishing to address the Board may do so during one of two comment periods, and the Board will determine whether to respond at that time or defer the issues raised to a later date. Anyone addressing the Board is asked to state his or her name and use microphones provided for audience members, which are right up here, so if you come to the podium, it might be easiest. So that those unable to attend meetings will be able to hear what transpired. All speakers are to conduct themselves in a civil manner. The board will not permit discussions of individual district personnel or students in public sessions. The board asks each speaker to be concise and reserves the right to limit the amount of time for each speaker to three minutes. Any questions should be directed to the board, not to administrators or other staff members. It is up to the board to determine what is appropriate to discuss and distribute at its meetings. And I would just like to read um, policy 0015 about civility. We believe that effective dialogue can occur only in an atmosphere of mutual respect, and therefore, <coughs> excuse me, it is the policy of the Hamilton Central School Board of Education to deduct, conduct its business at meetings and in all communications, written and oral, in a man manner that models respect and civility. We invite and expect members of the public to share this commitment with us. Further, we expect that the district students, faculty, and staff members, parent and student organizations, committees, and members of the community will, in their written communications, and while participating in meetings, school activities, and other school-related interactions, be guided by this policy and will conduct themselves with civility and respect. Thank you. Um, I just want to mention real quick, and I. Uh, this is not on the agenda, but I wanted to um, just acknowledge and be mindful that Atzalik Valley has had a student death and that the Hamilton Central School District thoughts are with them at this time. Very difficult time for them, so please keep that in mind um, as we go forward during this week. Okay, uh, are there any additions to the agenda? Can I have a motion to approve the agenda as submitted? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of minutes. There are a um, number of minutes here that are listed on board docs from August 10th, August 14th, August 28th, and September 6th. I need a motion to approve the minutes of all of these meetings and special meetings of the Board of Education. I move. All second. Second. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. All discussion? There's just one correction. Eight ten meeting it marked as being absent, and I was late. Is that down farther? You'll it, it, see. He does appear. It does you appear, do appear down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's just how there. I showed up later. Yeah, yeah I have to it does it's absent, right. and then when you arrive, it says Paul arrived. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have a consent agenda uh, for business operations, and we are going to include uh, items 3.1 through item or through items 4.1 I need a motion to approve the consent agenda as items as recommended by the superintendent the treasurer's report the financial report the consideration of claims the transportation report the cafeteria report and a motion to approve will da William Dowsland to continue to assume the duties and responsibilities of the athletic director with a 1,800 a dollar month stipend effective August 1st through October 31st, 2017, as recommended by the superintendent. I shall move. A second. Any discussion? Um, Matt, on the financial report, how are you feeling about where we stand compared to this point last year? <coughs> well, the the financial, I mean, through July is really not much of an indicator of 
you know, much of any, through the month of July is not much of an indicator of anything for the year, you know, the fiscal year beginning July 1. So um, I, there's n been nothing out of the ordinary in the first, which now being in the third month of operations, nothing out of the ordinary today. So it's certainly not in the reports either. The other piece is that we are now in the revenue gaining part of the uh, business cycle. So all of the tax checks are coming in. And so that will be what carries us. A, a significant part of our funding comes when we start collecting taxes. And that's, we're in it now. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, great. So we come to the first uh, opportunity for community participation. I will remind the general public to follow the communication protocols as outlined before the um, meeting, as the meeting began. And if you come up to the microphone, state your name, we'll be happy to hear you.
Everybody. I'm Alicia Simmons. I'm the parent of a second grader here at HCS, and I'm part of the core strategic plan, um, the core group for the strategic master plan. And I just wanted to come up here and share a little bit of my experience with everybody. Um, so we've been working on this since January, and I think that this past meeting we had, we met on Monday, was one of the most exciting that we've had yet. Our task forces came back. And it was a great moment to see everything that we've been talking about coming together. I recognize many of you in this room from that work that we're doing together. And for those of you who have not been part of the plan so far, I look forward to us all working together to implement the great ideas that people have been working on for nine months. So I just wanted to pop up here and say hello and make sure that everybody knows that it's, it's all coming together. And I wanted to publicly thank Dr. Alston for initiating this plan and for guiding us through it. Um, he has always been inspiring. He comes with a quote for us to think about. The last one was about growth and change, right? And thinking about the courage, right? The courage and the strength to make changes and to march forward. And so I just wanted to make sure that I publicly thanked Dr. A for the wonderful work that he has been doing in supporting us. And I look forward to working with all of you in the future as we move these things into action to grow our school into the community that we can be and that our children deserve. We're on a great path, and I'm so excited to be working with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as part of the community participation, um, we implemented a, a part of the uh, agenda to devote to board follow-up questions and communications that we've heard from um, past uh, public comment. And so at this time, I'm, I'm wondering if there's a follow-up that we need to do, if there was anything that came up from the board meeting that we needed to answer. Uh, not from a question or a follow-up in communication, just want to uh, again make us all aware that uh, that, that NISH report what came out saying that we're ranked one of the top schools in the state. Just want to congratulate, congratulate everyone on all, all the hard work that makes that happen. Thank you. Um, there, sorry. there is um, the part about technology that will be in later on in the agenda. It's just a follow-up and it will keep everyone um, as an update. Okay, moving on to new business. We have a few items for consideration. I need a motion to accept the resignation of Amy Lapp as telephone operator attendance aid effective August 29th, 2017 as recommended by the superintendent with sincere appreciation for services rendered to the district. So moved. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to approve the appointment of Sherry Zielinski as a probationary part-time .9 FTE teacher aide effective September 15, 2017 at step one of the salary schedule as recommended by the director of PPS and superintendent. So moved. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the appointment of Lindsay Cross as a probationary part-time .7 FTE teacher assistant, effective September 15, 2017, at step one of the salary schedule, as recommended by the director of PPS <coughs> and superintendent. I'll move. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? I need a motion to appoint the following mentors as recommended by the principals and superintendent for the 2017-18 school year, and I'll read them off. Shannon Byrne with Sue Lehman, Allison Forth with Jen Briggs, Emily Creek with Holly White, Dawn Giddings with Annette Silver, Carolyn Stoddard with Lauren Hyman, Susan White with Jessica Poyer, 
choral position, which is still uh, unfilled, with Mike Cauldron and Denise Cabas with Gina Tori. Okay, any discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm just going to stay. Stay. Okay. Um, I need a motion to approve the following as members of the 2017-18 APPR committee: Dr. Alston, Bill Dowsland, Kevin Ellis, Rick Hansen, Mark Arquette, Sue Lehman, Dan Rames, Meg Rose, Holly White and Gina Torrey, as recommended by the HTA President and Superintendent. So, second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Motion to approve Suzanne Watson and Judith McCann as substitute teachers, as was recommended by the principals and superintendent. All moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the recommendation of the committees on special education and preschool special education, and any discussion would happen in executive session. Move. Second. As I said, all discussion will take place in executive session. All in favor? I need a motion to accept the year-end Committee on Special Education report for the 2016-17 school year as recommended by the Director of PPS and Superintendent. I need a second. I'll second, thank you. Discussion? Um, I just read it today. Um, can, can you use the microphone, Harry? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I just read I. I just read it today. It looks like a lot of hard work went into it by a lot of people, so I want to thank everybody who, who uh, contributed to that. I hope it helps us a lot. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Abstain. I need a motion to approve Parth Ratch as a non-resident student of the 2017-18 school year as recommended by the superintendent. Isaac. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> Can I move? All second. Any discussion? No. Nope. It just, that was, that was part of going through the I-20 process to issue um, an I-20 which allowed a um, student to get go to the embassy and get a visa to come here on an F1 visa. So that was a, a steep learning curve and, and took some wines, but um, it, it's taken care of and uh, appreciate you. I'm sure he does appreciate the board uh, accepting him as a tuition paying student, out of district tuition paying student. Welcome back, Hart. <laughs> Okay, well, I can't walk them back. Yeah. Mm. All in favor? Aye. Uh, welcome back, Carter. <laughs> okay. <coughs> um, the smart schools, this one. Um, it says it will be placed on the October 5th BOE agenda. Can we update that, please? Sure. So we have to have a smart schools hearing, and at the last board meeting we discussed whether or not it should be split or not. And uh, we did the research with the SMART committee and they were aware that you can split the um, ticket, so to speak, so that we do the computers for classrooms first and then the security second. They were aware of that. That is the plan going forward. Um, and so all we need to do by putting it on this agenda, October 5th BOE, that is public notice, um, which gives us the requisite amount of days to um, at the hearing. To date, well, at the last time I checked, which was about a week ago, there was no public comment um, to Mr. Crumb or Ms. Curley regarding the um, proposed plan. So the, the next step is the public hearing, and it will be an agenda item on the Board of Education docket, so we don't need to have another meeting. Is there any discussion about that? Yeah, I, so as I understand it, the smart schools process, the committee was formed, they made recommendations, we approved to post them. We didn't approve the plan, we approved to post them. They needed to be posted at least 30 days. It's been more than 30 days. 
the intent of that was for the public to be able to read and comment. So then this next step is the hearing. Are we acting that day or just hearing that day? I don't have a definitive answer at this point because all I did is check. I'm going off a checklist yep. in terms of what happens next. Okay. So certainly in the weekly update and probably at the next BOE meeting, which will be October 5th, okay. you'll know well in advance because I'll have done my uh, research and sent you a weekly update before the next board meeting, okay. whether what exactly will happen if you in fact uh, need to take action or not. So I won't speculate. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on town schools? Okay. Um, any motion to accept the monetary donation of $16,000 from the McNeese Foundation with a sincere appreciation and to increase the budget by this amount? I'll move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much for that. I need a motion to approve Hamilton's participation on the Casanova Ice Hockey Program for the 2017-18 school year as recommended by the Acting Direct Athletic Director and Superintendent. I'll move. Second. Discussion? How many students does that involve? At this point, I, do, I have to get back to you. Okay. It's a small number. Okay. I believe it's two, two students. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the following as extracurricular co-curricular advisors for the 2017 school year as recommended by the principals and superintendent. I'll move. Hold on, I gotta read. Oh. Really? I don't have to read them. Please. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? Thank you to all of them. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, this is a point of continuing discussion, and um, I think we should discuss it now. <laughs> um, we, I need a recommended, the recommended action is to, to adopt the revised policy 5662 and to approve the, to, to delete the policies 5210 and old 5662. These are the school food service program and the meal charge policies. And Harry and Paul have been working on them, um, but I'd, I'd like to I'd like to suggest that we discuss this because I don't think we're ready to have a vote on this. I don't. I'll turn yours off again. Sorry. Sorry. Um, well, if, you, if we're talking about the discussion, the question of having to do with um, 5C and D, I think I can clear that up right now. You might be able to vote on it. Okay. But, okay. Great. Um, so under section 5c it says unpaid student meal charges may be carried over at the end of the school year as the delinquent debt and collection efforts may continue into the new school year to allow longer repayment plans the request to do a new policy said that you couldn't carry balances over to the next year <coughs> and in the explanation of that it also says that the reason for that is that the federal plan wants to be sure that debt isn't carried over in the federal school lunch program plan. D clarifies that we're not doing that. We're telling, C's telling us that we're not going to cut students off from that or have that kind of problem where we're gonna give you more time. But the way we're gonna collect it is not by carrying the debt over in the school lunch fund. It's going to be moved to the general fund. Therefore, I believe it isn't compliance with what the law mandated we change. So, I mean, when I read this, it seemed to me like we could just delete C and use D. I don't. Um, well, yes, no, you could combine them. The C originally, and again, whenever you start adapting, changing policies, you, you end up with this problem. C is supposed to address what happens at the end of the year with if you still have a debt carry over, whether you're going to allow them or not. D is actually explaining how you're going to do it. You could combine those. Yes, you could rewrite that and just say that the unpaid student loans are going to be carried over as to, but I just, we just kept it in the format that it was before. C saying whether you can have an unpaid balance or not, and D then describing the mechanism and how it works. So can I ask Matt to weigh in on this? Because that was, 
you were the one we were really waiting for to weigh in on this because you understand a lot of this better. Sure, I'd be happy. The issue here is, I mean, basically, historically here is we don't classify balances due as bad debt, period. Um, whether or not it's closed out of the school lunch account, carried over to the general fund. And especially, I mean, my opinion of this is not a positive one, this new legislation that's come down as it pertains to our district. Um, especially in the modern day where we have so much paid on account. Um, and as an example, if we have a student and a parent makes a, a payment on June 1st for a sophomore um, for an amount of money that they think is going to carry their child through the end of the school year and they underestimate and they're short by $8. Um, historically what we've done is we leave that $8 balance, negative balance on their account when the parent writes a check September 1st for $50, they start the year with a $42 balance. Um, by classifying it as bad debt, period, it, it creates problems regardless of where it goes. Um, and, and Paul's right, we could just you know, take on the debt in the general fund, uh, but that creates problems in a sense of then you have people making payments to the school lunch fund, um, but technically it needs to go to the general fund. So in that case, you have a check for $50, you have to pay, you have to deposit $8 to the general fund for the, the bad debt, and then the remaining 42 to the school lunch fund. So um, you, you can do it anyway. Um, I personally feel the way we've been doing it historically has been the best. Um, and the bottom line is we don't, we don't refuse anybody. So, um, you know, and I, I know that that's, not what we're trying to do, but... But um, can we do it the way we've been doing it within the new legislation? My understanding of the new legislation was that we can't. I'm, we're not supposed to. Well, <laughs> that, that's where... <laughs> well, and that's where C and D come from. Because we don't do we're it... Working on the we wording. don't philosophically believe we should do it that way. Um, we don't want, even though the federal government says you shouldn't carry this over, we think it should be carried over. So what Harry and I were trying to find is a mechanism to allow that to happen. Yeah, and as the expert, man, I'm willing to take your advice on whatever that way is. But the ruling from the federal government was very clear that it couldn't be, you're just going to carry it over into the school fund. Maybe we just don't mention it at all, but <laughs> yeah. the policy was given to us and, and we were told that you can't carry it over in the school fund. So I was finding it, trying to find a way to let it slide over and not violate federal law at the same time. Right. I think I think you have to remember these when this legislation comes down, it's it's such a broad scope of uh, types of school, you know, it applies to all school districts. And being a small community that we are, we are so in touch with our kids, so in touch with our clientele. Um, when it comes to student meals, who needs meals, who needs to charge, who doesn't need to, our staff has such a great um, sense of, of what's going on. So you know, as far as the general fund versus cafeteria fund, I would I would recommend not taking action on that. I, I would like to get an opinion from our um, auditor on on what that would entail and, and how that would look. You know, at, at year end, and then also um, what happens into the school year when you when you've got this this debt that's hanging out there. So, because for the most part, you know, you, you have to keep thinking. You can't really intermingle those funds. So. I would, uh, I'm not necessarily opposed to it, but I would want to give an opinion first. So, can I make a motion to get an opinion from the auditor and from BOCES, who provided us with the sample policy to begin with, and table well, it till next time? But it, it was just a discussion item, so I don't think we have to. Right. Um, we need to give it a follow sooner rather than later, or is there not a time crunch? Um, There's not a time crunch? As I, as I understand it, it, it is a motion to adopt tonight, but there's a motion on the table to table this because I think more discussion needs to happen. So I'm entertaining this motion to table it and seek counsel from OCs and the auditors. Yes. So moved. So that's the second. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, so the item is tabled um, for uh, next month. Who is going to get those opinions? I will do that. Okay, that's Matt and thank you. Austin. Thank you so much. And thank you to the policy committee on this because I know that this seems um, 
shouldn't say seems. <laughs> this is a lot of work. But this is important and it's thoughtful, thoughtful work. And, and, and I'm glad that we're doing this in, in this manner. Okay. Now we're at the information and correspondence. Um, administrator's reports. Um, we have um, Bill's report, Fred's report, and Kevin's report. Does anyone want to make any comments on that, Kevin? Anything to add? Nothing, no. Okay, Fred. <laughs> this is the start of the year. Great. No, I think we're off to a good start. Okay. Um, this is going well. I'm trying to get some samples in places. We did tonight, so thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Any other comments from the board? Austin? Thank you for the update. I'm out now. No, I know. Oh, okay. Yo, good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, we have a HISP update. Thank you. Uh, his update. Um, we have not reconvened yet. Uh, the priority right now is to convene the uh, technology coordinator search committee. Uh, I just got two names from teachers today. We will reach out to a couple of parents. The principals got emails that, that did that. And so we'll convene that committee. We'll do a search. We have resumes. And um, then we'll convene his committee. Um, as I indicated at the last meeting, um, the meeting before that, the, his committee is on hiatus, but people are still working behind the scenes. There is a um, draft policy that Dr. Robertson and Dr. Larson are working on. There's a communication uh, plan that included me, whereby I wrote the op-ed that we had a good conversation about. And um, just to keep the public aware of actually what's happening so that there is a level of transparency. There is um, Ms. Zook, Dr. Carolyn Zook, and uh, Ms. Sunderman working on a communication guide. And um, we expect um, at some point this fall to present to the board, um, but we will reconvene um, shortly. But I just want to get this technology committee together and start that interview process. So it's a matter of priorities at this point. Anything, Dr. Lawson? No, I, unfortunately, I didn't, wasn't able to get to the last several meetings, so I really haven't been actively involved in, in, in quite some time. But um, I know I'm getting emails, so I know that there are still things, um, like you mentioned about the communication guide, and information was requested for that, and those sorts of things. So wheels are turning. Okay, um, we have an update for strategic planning. Okay, uh, we met Monday um, here on September 11th, and um, it was exciting. Um, there are roughly, um, I'd say, 40-something people across the district who are participating. It varies given um, who's available. The core team has laid out some clearly identifiable um, areas and strategic intents. The task forces have now put together the steps and actions they believe will uh, help uh, raise the lid and the level. Um, and so they presented the other night, got feedback from the different teams. Um, and what will happen next is they will, um, everyone will get the feedback and uh, there will be some additional action um, in terms of refining. Uh, they are also, there's a group working on the um, mission, vision, and core beliefs. And um, I did ask that, well, while I, ideally they would have something to present at the October board meeting and be done, that may not happen, but we did ask them to be prepared to present at the October board meeting as we are closer to uh, the end of the line. Uh, and we uh, certainly would be in the amount of days that we've been approved for, and uh, I think this plan, the, the amount of work that went into it um, is just very impressive. One group met every week over the summer. Uh, that level of commitment is there. So I'm looking forward to uh, that. And, uh, that's the strategic planning uptick. Thank you. Um, steering committee update. Um, those will be picking back up again once 
students uh, would get more in, uh, into the school year. Did you guys meet elementary? We did. You did meet? Did. Oh, yeah. now I'm going to pass it to Kevin because I can notice him. Okay. Sorry. Um, we were just setting the stage for the year. Um, one of the main things we focused on was um, there used to be a club called Leg Up and Learning. It was, a, it was a group of community members that um, got together and supported some of the, some of our really neediest children at our, at our elementary school. Um, and they were a um, real reliable source for um, support, both academically and kind of socially. Um, and so we're revitalizing that. We decided to change the name for Leg Up on Learning. Kind of brought up some laughter for some reason. <laughs> anyway, gets that. <laughs> so we're uh, we're gonna we're working on changing the name. We're also uh, some of the members have actually reached out to some organizations. They this week they um, one of the members reached out to the Hamilton um, Club, and um, we're also reaching out to the Rotary Club. This week to, to uh, um, look for participation um, and support. And we're just collecting names. And <coughs> next meeting, we're gonna we will outline um, what the expectations for those mentors um, would be for the students. Um, the number one being we've already decided to be reliable <coughs> and consistent, so that um, these students have someone in their life that's, that's really solid. So that's, that was the main focus. And we talked about some other ventures uh, that we're going to partner with the elementary in our care education program this year. And so there's some support. And I can um, just talk about the secondary uh, steering committee meeting. We'll pick those back up again. But I know the main focus last year was on absenteeism. And we're going to continue our work on that. That's really what we're focused on, I think, is kind of our main focus. So um, once Bill gets uh, back, we'll pick those back up again. I'm seeing Heather here. And, Nodding because she's on that committee, so thank you so much. Okay. Um, there is a um, uh, committee meeting that comes out of the HTA. It's called the HTA Board of Education Advisory Committee, and they meet monthly, and we are starting to expect updates from them. So I'm going to turn it over to Michelle and Ellen for that update. Um, so we did meet in August, and we're scheduled. Okay. So we did meet in August. Oh, there we go. Okay. And uh, the meetings are on the schedule for monthly meetings at this point. Um, the August meeting, there were discussions of program. Um, there were discussions of high school electives um, for, for the high school students. Um, there was a discussion about um, creating a policy for class sizes. That is something that would require the board to discuss it, discuss if we were interested in having the policy committee pursue that. Um, so that is something that we need to talk about, and uh, there were discussions of technology. So those were the topics that were discussed um, at that meeting. Did you want to comment? I do. Okay. Yep, uh -huh. One of the things that came up out of that meeting that um, we discussed at cabinet is the use of the laptops. Mm -hmm. And so what will, so as you know, we were uh, granted, given um, some IMAX from Colgate, and we are were giving uh, replacing teachers with old Mac with old laptops and, and kind of taking them back. Um, some teachers want to use them, so we discussed it at cabinet. And uh, because the MacBooks are old, what will happen down the road is we will go to the board and ask you to access them and just give them to the teachers so that they are out of the system. So one of the things that you want to do when you have a system is to get rid of things that you don't want in your system. Uh, and so if teachers want to use them for work or for home, that's fine. Um, but as long as it's the district property, you now have to own and monitor whether or not what they're doing with it at home. And it doesn't matter. If we just give it to them, it's theirs to use. And um, we want a fresh cycle of things anyway. So that's going to come. That's going to come your way. Uh, and. Uh, that we thought that that makes the most sense. And that's really the way you handle a technology cycle. You, you move them out. Okay, anything else on that? Okay, um, item 7.6 is the superintendent's update. Thank you. We used to say we had a, a powerful uh, welcome back um, the school year. The theme for this year is 
uh, from success to significance uh, through a partnership with the HACC Hamilton Area Community Coalition. We began the day, open school day, with a welcome back rally outside of HCS. The rally included business owners, service providers, parents, employees of HCS, community leaders, uh, New York State Regent Elizabeth Hackinson, members of the Colgate Athletic Department, and just friends of HCS. <laughs> Secondary students were also welcomed by Regent Hackinson in forum. Additionally, uh, HACC under uh, also um, donated uh, plants, and they went out and bought plants for all of our teachers and a letter of gratitude, and that was placed on their desks for the first day of school. And um, I, I think it was very well received uh, by the teachers. Um, with regard to region, and we had two very nice articles in, in the local paper as a result. Um, and um, a lot of positive feedback from students and um, some feedback in terms of how to do it even better next year if, if we do it next year. Um, Regent Hackinson uh, is our regent and, and represents this region. She came in and spent the night in town. I had dinner with her the evening before um, on the 6th. We spent a good deal of time uh, discussing the focus designation and how she can advocate for a more effective way of evaluating schools. Um, that feedback is crucial and that relationship is crucial to have um, your policymakers come to your community and get to see and know what's going on. So um, she clearly can see how ineffective that designation is for us, what it does for us, and um, what we're in fact doing here. So that was powerful. She did a tour of uh, the buildings and classrooms and um, we, the uh, regional superintendents, will be meeting with her in November to talk about other items that are uh, more specific to this central New York region and not just HCS. So that went very well. In other news, um, we did receive a Title I review. We received notification from the New York State Education Department that we were that we successfully completed a comprehensive review on the district's Title I and Title II programs in accordance with Every Student Succeeds Act. We met the compliance requirements and all the indicators were reviewed. And just so that everyone in the community is clear, Title I funding is for academic support for low-income students, and Title II funding is for staff development, teacher recruitment to ensure that we have highly, highly qualified teachers. So that's funding that's kind of earmarked for those things. And um, the audit really just makes sure you're spending your money the way you should be spending your money, and they'll give you uh, feedback. Um, in the same vein of curriculum and instruction, we uh, did get, to, at, at the last meeting I indicated that we were not able to lose the focus designation and we were notified that we, in fact, had to quickly get in an updated district comprehensive improvement plan to nice it. So uh, Mr. Ellis uh, put together a small team, looked at the areas for growth outlined in the strategic intents, which has so many people involved in it, and uh, sent the plan up to Albany. Now why that's important is because it makes us eligible to apply for the grant and money that is available. Without that, you can't do it. Um, and so, I, I also want to just be really clear with the board and certainly the community, any mandate by NYSED to get a plan in place is not necessarily the way to uh, increase student achievement, student learning, and student outcomes. Um, and so while we have that in place, we will review it with staff. There are other things that we have started um, last year, the year before, that we'll continue to invest in um, that will get us where we want to go. Last two things, the last couple of things, we um, are proud to announce that we have a coding class at the secondary school, started this year, and um, you know, that's a picture and tweeted on, uh, um, on our tweet. That is, uh, I think, adds significant value. Super Tuesdays will begin again next Tuesday. Uh, that's something that I created last year where I pretty much leave my schedule open on Tuesdays and people can drop in, anyone in the community, um, insights, ideas, anything you want. This year we started Employee of the Month, and uh, I, I'm sure everyone will agree that Mr. Schick, Greg Schick, is the Employee of the Month. Um, Mr. Ellis and Mr. Dowslin will do the selections after the first month. Uh, I did it just because I guess that's a perk of the job, and 
certainly well deserved by Mr. Schick. Um, this year we will have another community book read. This book will be Crucial Conversations, Tools for Talking When the Stakes Are High. I will also be doing some additional professional development with that within the organization, within the school district. I think that's a really good tool that um, we'll be moving on. Last thing, uh, Superintendent Goals, I just wanted to put some things out there. Obviously the book read and professional development on Crucial Conversations. One of the things that I'll be that I'm, I'm formulating is to recommend action on a strategic plan, but then you'll need to convene, convene an implementation team to prioritize action areas. Um, in the areas of curriculum development and instruction, uh, I want to convene a curriculum team and really decide and have them have looks at online platforms where all of our curriculum can be and never be um, deleted and can be constantly updated. Those are things that I'm uh, thinking about. And obviously on the website under superintendent's goals, if you look at 16, 17, any goals that I put for this year, unless the board picks a new one, will be extensions of what we've accomplished last year. So you can expect that if we did an RTI plan last year, that this year we're going to invest in professional development and, and as we started already. So that's the superintendent's update. There's a lot, um, but there's a lot that's going on. And that's my update. Thank you. Uh, the last item for information correspondence. Um, as part of um, the board's professional development, we're committed to um, figuring out how to work better in the interest of students and growing our district and making our district move forward. And so to that end, um, all five of us and Dr. Alston will be attending the New York State School Board Association annual meeting. Um, it's in Lake Placid. Um, I think this is unprecedented because I think it's maybe one of the first times all of the board members are attending. And so I want to just thank you all for committing to do that and to do the work of the board um, and to invest in yourselves to grow um, our relationships as a board with the community and the school. So um, I've listed, I've, I've um, attached the conference schedule to um, our board docs and it just says schedule in advance. And what I'd invite um, all five of us to do, including Dr. Alston, is to come prepared to the October 5th meeting with uh, um, uh, the, the, the workshops that you'd like to attend um, and sort of we'll map out kind of where we're going to be at this convention um, so that uh, we all, it, it's all value added for each of us and that um, we can kind of spread ourselves out to get the most knowledge in, in that short amount of time we have together. So I'd like you to do that. <coughs> Dr. Austin, you're, you're on, on that uh, assignment too. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. So, can I ask a question? yes. Debbie. Um, I, I, I at least had asked to be registered for one of these Thursday conferences, yes. and so I'm already in. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I just wanted to add that um, last year I was the only member that was able to attend in Buffalo, and I'm, I'm also thrilled that we're all going to be able to go because one of the frustrations I had, there's so many good sessions, I'm sitting there going, well, I can only go to one. Um, but I think, you know, which we know, but a lot of people don't realize is. We're bored with only one member that's got more than three years here. Everybody's a first termer or just under their second. So the more training we can get in this, the better. So I'm thrilled we're all going to be able to be there. Thank you. 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 Thank you.